All right, YouTube. Uh, what I'm going to show you here in this episode of uh, building a GPS guided robot is the app that I made in, in App Inventor. Uh, now, first and foremost, I tell you now the app is basically built for functionality. This is not made for looks, and there's a lot of things that you can do in App Inventor to you know make beautiful uh, icons and everything to make this look look nicer. So, anyway, if uh, uh, you want to, you can you can do that in in, in App Inventor. But uh, first of all, I just want to go uh, go over and show you um, the uh, design of, of this, um, show you the functions and everything. And you probably already have seen this if you watch any, any of my videos. But anyway, I just want to go over some basics um, with it. Um, first of all, um, of course, you got your uh, connect button here so you can connect up to, to Bluetooth. You can see the little Bluetooth module here in the background. And if I were to click connect, then... Uh, you select the uh, the address of the uh, of your Bluetooth module right here, and so once once it uh, connects up, you'll notice. Whoops! Once it connects up, you'll notice the uh, red light there will um, stop stop blinking, and it it'll, it'll be solid. So Bluetooth connected, and you'll hear an audible confirmation that you're you're connected now um next of course you can disconnect from bluetooth by pressing that button uh underneath here you got your uh your gps uh features uh, you can press the gps info which will uh, give you your current gps location your latitude and your longitude um you've got your uh uh, set waypoints so you can set multiple waypoints now at this point in time I've only got it set up so you can set up five waypoints um, and then uh, once you're done setting up your waypoints you press the done button and that will um, confirm confirm that and you also have a clear waypoint so you can clear out all, all of your waypoints and then once uh, but once you have set your waypoints once you press the uh, go to waypoint what it does it goes to the very first waypoint that you that you set and then when it gets to that waypoint the, it will stop and then you can press the go to waypoint again it will go to the next waypoint and so forth and so on in the code i'll probably um i want to change it in the code so you can set as many waypoints as you want i just haven't had time to uh to change that yet um Underneath here, you've got uh, your you know basic buttons: forward, left, right, stop, reverse, all that. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you got your uh, turn left 90 degrees, so the car will you know if it's sitting like this, it's going of course it's going to turn turn left 90 degrees. And if you press the turn right, it's going to turn right 90 degrees. Um, here underneath that you got your your compass settings you got the uh, the set heading button you can uh, press that compass heading set and it will set the uh, the heading you see right there where it uh, pointing 50 56 degrees um so um you can also do press compass drive and what it's going to do is it's going to keep that heading at approximately 56 degrees now there is a um, um in the in the code there's a deviation uh, setting so that uh, you can it will allow the car to keep going forward as long as it's within say five degrees of that heading um, you can change that number but the problem you don't want to set it too low because what will happen if you set that number too low uh, when it's say it's driving forward and it uh, of course eventually it's going to get off course slightly because the wheels uh, some wheel one of the wheels might be turning faster than the other so it's going to going to want to get off course somewhat and so if you set that hit that uh, that deviation too low what's going to what's going to happen is is because your compass is trying to keep that heading it's going to it's going to kind of want to jitter back and forth uh, trying to find that that heading. So say if you set it exactly 180 degrees and you don't you don't get it, uh, you only give it two degrees deviation. Uh, what's going to happen is it's going to try to maneuver 
back and forth and keep that 180 degrees and what's going to happen is the the robot is going to be moving back and forth so quickly it'll never be able to be able to keep that and it'll just spend all of its time just wiggling back and forth and not actually um, traveling any forward so you got to give it some amount of deviation from the core so what will happen is the car will will go go forward uh, for a period of time and eventually you'll see okay I'm five degrees off and it'll correct and it'll keep on going at that at that 180 degree course or whatever course it is that, that you set it at and so um, let's see here um, we got um, a calibrate button which I would suggest you not use because this is just kind of for testing purposes it was an idea that I had about um, in, in the other the previous video that I had I showed you how to calibrate our our compass here and um, the uh, this was kind of a, a way to possibly try to calibrate the the compass without using any any code uh, not not hard coding it in um, this is kind of similar to some of these uh, quadcopters that you'll see you know uh, when you you have to calibrate them and they'll tell you to rotate the robot you know in a, a certain pattern and things you know in order to, to calibrate the compass and that was something other that, that I did and I really haven't had very good results with it so far you might want to um, try to you know look at that and maybe you can develop that further and make it make it work but um, I really it really hasn't been something other that I've really cared a, a whole lot about because once you calibrate your compass then you're kind of good to go um, next um, you got a uh, ping on and off button here and what that does there's a uh, ping sensor it's now it's not on this robot um, it's on the other robot here there's a there's a ping sensor right there and of course what it does is it's just a dense uh, distance sensor and so that if uh, um, the robot comes across an obstacle what it will do uh, the way I got it in the code I think is it 12 inches or some of that if it gets within 12 inches of some other it just stops the robot I think it actually sends it in uh, reverse for a uh, uh, you know a half of a second or something like that uh, to uh, avoid um, hitting anything so but the ping sensor I really haven't uh, developed that any so uh, that's another one of those will test test things out so between the the calibrate and the ping those are two areas of the code that I really would say say are just more for testing purposes and just for fun at, at this point and you can you can look at that and and develop that and if you if you'd like um uh, let's see what else here um if you got a um a turn speed um now this is kind of important here um i've got two different speeds that are running the uh the motors there's the the normal speed of the motors when you're running and forward and reverse and everything but there's a different speed that i got for the uh for the for turning left and right um as far as uh when it's in the situation where it's turning using the compass uh, of course when you're turning just normally turning left and right it's still turning at the, the same rotation the same speed as it would if you're you know using uh, forward and reverse but when it's using the compass to turn what i did is i slowed the motors down and the reason for that is if the if the robot is on a very smooth surface um there's not a lot of friction there and so what i noticed what what happened is if i kept the motors at, at full speed uh when it was trying to say say if it were if i told it to turn if i press the turn right 90 degrees um what would happen is it would t turn right but it would actually move so fast it would actually go past that 90 90 degree mark if it was on a sm smooth surface um if it's on uh if this thing is on a carpet or some hard surface it it uh actually does a pretty good job of turning it 90 degrees and actually stopping but if it's on a very very slick surface 
what it will do is it will actually be going so fast in that turn it would actually go past that 90 degree mark so what I did was is I, I, um, I put this option here where I could turn the uh, uh, the speed down while it's turning so you got a little slider bar here and let's see here if I turn it down to I believe the lowest setting it uh, see it sets the turn speed to 155 uh, it max it out, maxes out, I believe, at 255. That's the maximum speed that these motors will, will go. Um, if uh, I, There was a reason why I made it 100 and, uh, 155. was because if you turn this down so low, if you, turn, if you um, set the speed on these motors too low, uh, they wouldn't even have enough uh, voltage to be, really be even able to turn at all. So that's why it's at it's at 155. Um, so anyway, that's the uh, that's most of the app there. And what I'll do is I will uh, go over to App Inventor and show you how to uh, download this uh, the, um, this this program here, this app. And uh, but one thing that you'll need is um, a um, program, MIT App Inventor program. Uh, app that you can get you can download it from the uh, from the app store it's it's free doesn't cost anything this is basically what what it looks like and um, what you do is you um, you can once you go to the have the uh, go to the uh, uh, store there I say it's not a store um, once you go to the um, app inventor website what you can do is you can press the, uh, um, you can have the program build and it, you can scan, scan a code. Uh, what you do is you can see it just kind of brings up your camera on your phone and it brings up a, uh, a barcode on your computer and it'll scan that barcode and it will automatically download the file uh, to you. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go ahead and show you that here in just a second. Okay, so if you go to the uh, Google Play Store, um, this is uh, what you want to download. You can see I've already got it got it installed, but uh, it's MIT um, Companion is the, is the name of the program. So you'll just go to your uh, Google uh, Play Store and download this app. And then once you once you have this this app, um, uh, you can go. I'll provide the link for you to go to to be able to download the the program in App Inventor. All right, so hold on just a second and let me let me show you that. All right, this is the uh, uh, location in the uh, um, MIT App Inventor. This is the uh, site where you can go to and download the app. And um, anyway, uh, so just just go here and you can download the app to your phone. And um, also later on you can you know make make changes to it and everything and make it your own but uh, anyway uh, you'll just uh, use the um, the app that on your phone to to download this this file and it will install on your phone now it might uh, on your phone it might bring up something about saying uh, you got to give it special permission to um, to open the file and everything because it's basically trying to protect you you know from viruses and things but uh, anyway just have to give it a special one-time permission to download the app and anyway it will it will create the app on your phone and you can open it and and use it and um, so anyway um, I think that's gonna about wrap it up for this video uh, next one I'm gonna uh, probably gonna go into the uh, code um, post the code to GitHub and we'll go through the code. That'll probably be the, the longest video trying to, to explain everything. But um, anyway, we'll uh, try to get on that as quickly as possible because I'm trying to get to uh, get get through with this and try to get it get it out there for, for everyone. At the same time I'm also um, <clears throat> creating an, an instructable so anyway so everyone can uh, be able to um, so everyone can 
understand how to how to use the the, the program, um, how to uh, use the app, and also how to actually build the the robot. Although most of that is pretty much covered on the on the YouTube videos, but at least this is kind of we'll put it in um, textual form and have some some pictures to go along with it and be able to see how how to actually build it and maybe a little bit of the, uh, the the story behind it and everything so anyway I'm I'm working on this and uh, it's pretty long so far but um, anyway I'm slowly slowly building this uh, this instructable here and hopefully hopefully sometime maybe the next uh, few days maybe the next seven days I'm hoping at the most is go ahead and get this get this published and wrapped up and go ahead and put it out there for for everyone so anyway just just stay tuned and we'll try to get on that as quickly as possible thanks for watching